Scott Drew has turned Baylor into a pretty consistent winner since taking the job prior to the 2004 season. They've been to four Sweet 16s, including two Elite Eight appearances. But the typical Scott Drew Baylor team has excelled on the offensive side of the floor. This year's version is elite defensively, not to mention the current number one team in the country at 20 and one. In prior seasons, Baylor's defense was actually known for their unconventional zone defense. They were around a 50-50 split between zone and man in the last several years. This season not only has Drew gone away from the zone, but their man-to-man -man now looks a lot like another Big 12 team known for their defense. Baylor's defense this season prioritizes keeping the ball out of the middle, in similar ways to Texas Tech. You'll see Baylor on-ball defenders with their feet pointing towards the sideline to make the ball handler drive in that direction. The defense has been highly successful. They're allowing just 0.88 points per possession in the Big 12. That's the number one defensive efficiency team in the conference in a league that has several great defenses. In this video, we'll break down the Baylor defense. First, starting with Texas Tech to show the similarities to Baylor, but then looking at what makes Baylor's defensive scheme unique. We'll also go into detail on Baylor's three best defenders, their individual skill sets, and how they fit into the overall scheme. The Texas Tech style of forcing the ball to the baseline puts more control into the defense's hands. The basics of the system are fairly straightforward. Send the ball handler to the sideline and then give early help. Because they're forcing it one way, it's easier for the Texas Tech help to be early because they know where the ball is going to be dribbled. That allows their help defenders to meet the ball outside of the paint and take charges. With Texas Tech's Final Four appearance last season, it's not a surprise that other teams are trying out some of the concepts. We even wrote an article titled, Should More Defenses Force Baseline? exclusively for HoopVision Plus subscribers back in October. As a member of the Big 12, Scott Drew has coached against Chris Beard's no middle defense twice a year since he joined the league. And you can see the influence it's had on the 2020 version of his team. On baseline drives, you can find examples of Baylor helping outside the paint and basically zoning up away from the ball, with the weak side defenders acting almost like free safeties to take away skip passes. The Baylor defense is especially good at recovering in scramble situations. Coaches like to talk to their players about the need for giving multiple efforts within a single possession on the defensive end. And that's a theme for Baylor's defense. Watch here how Davion Mitchell goes from being the potential first help on the drive to immediately rotating to the weak side to somehow block this shot out of a scramble situation. It's a combination of scheme, effort, and athleticism that makes plays like these possible. By refusing to give up on a play and continuing to scramble, the defense increases the probability of forcing a turnover or the ball just eventually winding up in a non-shooter's hands. The trade-off of the early help outside the paint is giving up skip pass threes. No matter how good a defense is at zoning up and scrambling, rotations will sometimes lead to open threes. Against Texas Tech, we've seen that the teams that have optimal spacing on the weak side make the scrambles more difficult to execute. While Baylor isn't totally immune to these same three-pointers, their scheme does minimize them more than Texas Tech's. We'll get to the exact reasons why a little bit later, but first let's look at how Baylor guards screens. Against ball screens, Baylor will ice the ball handler by not letting him use the screen in the first place. It's a very natural thing for them to do because the defender is already forcing the ball away from the screen just in their regular base defense. If the player setting the screen is a shooter, Baylor can even ice to a full rotation. Here Tristan Clark does that. Ball screens where the screener comes from a player already on the perimeter are more difficult to ice. 
here Mark Vidal is pressuring the ball, but then unable to recognize the screen quickly enough to ice. So the other common coverage for Baylor is to simply switch. You can see they ice the first ball screen, but then spend the rest of the possession aggressively switching. Switching both on and off ball screens is yet another thing Baylor has in common with Texas Tech. Baylor will switch to take away the opponent's intended action and then immediately deny to further disrupt offensive flow. Ultimately, it doesn't leave offenses with many options besides baseline drives or late clock isolation. Switching in the past has been viewed by coaches as the easy way out or something that should only be used as a last resort, not out of convenience. But many of the best modern day defenses like Baylor now use switching as a weapon. Another thing Baylor opponents will often try to do against the switches is post up their smaller players in mismatches. But again, Baylor stays aggressive in these situations. They front the post and make life difficult for the offense. Here with Tristan Clark in at the five, Baylor doesn't switch. They do the alternative, which is putting two on the ball. And doing that makes it difficult to cover the roller to the hoop. Listed at 6'9", 245, Freddie Gillespie is one of the more versatile defenders in the country for his size. When he's playing the five, he can switch out onto guards, keep them in front, and force difficult shots over his length. Here Gillespie goes from locking up one Florida guard to immediately guarding another, and then even finishes out the play with a late clock contest. The best perimeter defender on Baylor, and really one of the best in the entire country, is Davion Mitchell. He's only listed at 6'2", but he has a tendency of making life miserable for the opposing team's best player by just keeping the ball in front. Mitchell has excellent natural instincts defensively. Even in transition situations, he'll anticipate the play before it happens and use his quick hands to disrupt plays where the offense should theoretically have the major advantage. The 
The last in the trio of players that fuels the Baylor defense is Mark Vital. He's the most versatile player on the roster to guard multiple positions. And just like his teammates, he's difficult to score on in one-on-one -on -one scenarios. Here, Florida is holding for the last shot of the half. Their play is to have Kerry Blackshear set a ball screen. Watch how even though Vital isn't guarding Blackshear, the Baylor players recognize what's happening and intentionally send Vital up to guard the final play. Vital is a very physical and aggressive defender. His quick hands are a reason why he's number three in the Big 12 in steal percentage, but he'll also pick up some fouls from being overly aggressive. So given their overall personnel, Baylor is pretty clearly elite at guarding the ball. They have players capable of sending the ball baseline while still staying in front to prevent easy baskets. And as a result, this is where their scheme differentiates the most from Texas Tech. The Texas Tech help defenders come to meet you outside the paint no matter what. But Baylor will often play it more straight up, relying on the on-ball defender to guard one-on-one. -on -one. The obvious benefit here to not having to help so much is to not give up those kick-out threes. Instead, Baylor makes the driver have to create his own shot. The system also fits perfectly with Freddie Gillespie's rim protection ability. He doesn't need to help early in order to still block or alter a shot. Watch here how even though Gillespie is keeping contact with his man, he has the size and length to still easily block the driver's shot. If you have someone like Mitchell guarding the ball and someone like Gillespie roaming the paint, that early help simply isn't that necessary. Here's a specific example of Gillespie's length against Arizona's lob play. As you can see, Arizona has gotten this lob several times this season. When they ran it against Baylor, Gillespie didn't even necessarily recognize it right away. His head is turned away from the ball. Even now, with the ball already in the air, he's still holding onto his man, yet he still has plenty of time to break up the play all on his own. By forcing the ball baseline and helping late, opponents are forced to settle for floaters and runners. In fact, Baylor allows the most runners of any high major defense in the entire country. Not only that, but thanks to players like Gillespie, Mitchell, and Vital, Baylor opponents have made just 28% of those runners. From a defensive perspective, you'll happily live with a 28% floater over a kickout three. All of these different factors are why Baylor has gone from the 75th ranked defense last season to not only a top defense this season, but a final four contender. Thank you very much for watching. We have a newsletter coming out on the Baylor defense with more on how it compares statistically to Texas Tech, but also other top defenses like Virginia and Kansas. I'll put a link to that in the description and please subscribe to the channel for much more content as we head into March.